On the 25th day of October, Halloween gave to me 25 Grateful Hitchhikers, 24 Soggy Corpses, 23 Shadows Creeping, 22 Egyptian Eyeballs, 21 Acid Raves, 20 Creepy Stalkers, 19 Kiernan's Time Traveling, 18 Zombie Swatting, 17 Kegner Screeching, 16 Flying Engines, 15 Workplace Accidents, 14 Logs of Bouncing, 13 Planes Exploding, 12 Zombie Soldiers, 11 Angels Wrestling, 10 Ghostly Hitchhikers, 9 Basement Clowns, 8 Vampire Cruises, 7 Silent Heroes, 6 Prequel Bloodstones, 5 Diabolical Fledglings, 4 Vampire Pianists, 3 Dead Professors, 2 Michelle Actresses, and a Radu Drooling Something Bloody. Hey everyone, welcome to another of the 31 days of Halloween. You have washed up on the shores of a Wednesday. Uh, and we have less than a week to go, which is a bummer. We're in the last uh, week proper of Halloween and the last of our uh, series of movies. Uh, we have reached the midpoint of that, which is Creepshow 2. We talked yesterday about Creepshow and what an amazing movie that is. Creepshow 2 is kind of a step down in every way, in my estimation. One, not as many stories. Uh, it's not a, as long, so it's got that going for it, but it feels much more like two or three episodes, well, three episodes, I suppose, it's three stories, like three episodes of uh, Tales from the Crypt or Tales from the Dark Side or something like that stitched together as opposed to uh, Creep Show, which felt like, you know, hey, we're reading all these stories in this horror comic. Some of them are a little longer, some of them are a little shorter. All of these feel like they're roughly the same length. I, I didn't time it, but I think they're about 30 minutes each. Um, and it, the big thing that bothers me about Creepshow 2 is that it just lacks all of the style of Creepshow. And if you're not bothering to do Creepshow, if you're not going to do you know, all the gel lights and the crazy backgrounds and the comic trappings, which it has a little bit of in, in transitioning from scene to scene. There's a little bit of that, but that's kind of it. And it doesn't ever really play with the comic format that much. And the, the thing that I keep thinking about is that scene from creep show in the, they're creeping up on you story where E.G. Marshall is framed by all of these hand-drawn cockroaches all surrounding him. And that was so weird and creepy and fun and funny and all of these things at once. It's really a tremendous kind of moment in that movie where everything comes together. E.G. Marshall is hamming it up a little bit, but he's also projecting the right kind of fear and you're using the comic format, but you're playing with that. But it's also just the, you know, the idea of a million cockroaches surrounding you. Like, it's all of those things all at once, and, it, and it's kind of wonderful. And Creepshow 2 doesn't have anything approaching something that creative or that captivating. And it, you know, it, these are stories by Stephen King, but they're not written by Stephen King. They're written by George Romero. And one wonders if his heart was really in it or if this was, you know, him just cashing a paycheck at this point. Although it has some high points and, and it's not awful. It just, it, like, if this were called something else other than Creepshow 2, I would probably like it more than I do. But let's take it story by story. There's the wraparound with uh, the, the creep or whatever he is called in Creepshow delivering magazines and this is famously done by uh tom savini uh, although his voice is dubbed over and you know he's doing a pretty good job acting inside the makeup and and all of that is fine but the thing <laughs> that goes south is when it turns into animation and the animation just looks shitty it, I don't know if it's that it's too busy or if it's too bright and colorful. I don't know. I, I can't exactly put my finger on what I don't like about it, but I hate it. I don't like any of the animation in this. 
And there's a lot of it. There's a lot of, and maybe that's it too, is that it's just too much animation because in Creepshow, it's essentially the animation is, hey, here's this creepy monster. We're going to go down to a trash can. And then the comic book flips open. Whereas with this, it's the creep flying out and bats around and the creep is getting punny where he didn't speak at all in the original. And I like that more. And he's like throwing beef to some Komodo dragon that lives inside the walls of whatever castle we're in. Like all of this stuff. I just don't want any of it. I just want it to feel like a comic book and uh, like one of the old EC comics, as opposed to this whole, like it feels like tales from the crypt, the HBO series. And I, I've already got that. I've got a punny rotting host that is perfectly fine. Like I really like, uh, John Cassier as the, as the Crypt Keeper in Tales from the Crypt. I don't need an animated, shittier version of that. Anyway, let's get to our first story, which is Old Chief Woodenhead. Ugh. Wow. This does not hold up. Uh, this uh, stars George Kennedy as Ray Spruce. We've got um, Dorothy Lamore as his wife Martha. They run a grocery store in the middle of a dying town. There's, uh, you know, uh, some hooligans, uh, namely, um, oh, what is his name? The guy who's in, in Manhunter at this point. I don't remember his name now. Anyway, he is in this as a Native American kid. Also not great. Oh, here it is. I looked up the name Holt uh, McCallany, uh, who, you know, was in that he was in um manhunter uh he was in one of those jack reacher shows uh nightmare alley he's great nightmare alley yeah 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 so he you know he's been in a bunch of stuff uh but we do not need him in brown face is what i would argue that is that's what i believe uh call me old-fashioned but i don't think brown face is great and yeah, so that's a little problematic. Um, and it's just the most obvious of stories, right? Like George Kennedy is, uh, has lines of credit on a bunch of people in the local, uh, tribe. And so he, you know, it takes as a down payment from, uh, the, the head of the tribe, uh, their chief, um, you know, a bunch of their like sacred goods, a bunch of necklaces and jades and emeralds and whatnot. And as he's hanging on to this, uh, we get, uh, hold McCallany and a bunch of the thugs from the, the reservation and a couple of, you know, just regular schmegular white dudes, uh, hold the place up and they kill, uh, you know, uh, George Kennedy's wife. Uh, before killing him and steal all the stuff. And sure enough, old chief Woodenhead comes back to life and kills them all. And uh, Holton McCallany, who has the, the entire segment is talking about what great hair he has. Sure enough, he gets scalped. And when the chief of the tribe comes to see what's what at the store the next day, uh, sure enough, old chief Woodenhead is there with the scalp in hand. And it's, it's kind of fine. Like there are things about it that are problematic, but again, that's looking at it through, you know, 2023 eyes. And, and it just, you know, it, it's the same reason Italian actors were used for Mexican performers and old black and white movies and stuff. It's, it's not great, but it's just what the times were. And you can't really blame hold McCallany for getting a job, you know? Um, but even aside from all that, it's just kind of dull. The acting in it is real over the top. Um, worth saying George Romero, who of course directed creep show steps down. And this is all directed by Michael Gornick, uh, who directed a, a lot of tales from the dark side episodes with, uh, Romero's company and whatnot. And, um, all of that is disappointing enough. And then you get to the raft, which is easily the best segment of the three, 
based on a Stephen King story. It follows the beats of that story pretty closely. And and the raft is pretty good. It's it, it holds up mm, a little less well now. And I think that's just effects and so forth. Although some of the effects hold up pretty well. And if you know the story of the raft, it's just a bunch of teenagers that swim out to uh, this, you know, the raft in question. It's just this wooden platform out in the middle of a lake. And there is this oil slick looking monster cruising around the lake eating stuff. And it uh, it's kind of like the blob in that it'll like ooze up through the slats in the raft and uh, gets a, a like mesmerizes one girl to touch it and then it just grabs her and sucks her in and uh, there's a scene that gets pretty rapey but as memory serves that is a scene from the book as well and what are you gonna do uh, you know it's Stephen King in the 80s and uh, you know that's just how we rolled uh, you look no further than it for that uh, but it's pretty good it's you know the the oil slick monster effects range from the the good when it's attacking someone to the less impressive when it's just cruising around in the water and it just looks like a black uh you know trash bag like a lawn and garden bag floating on top of the water and that's not quite as fun but it's it's a pretty good segment like if this were in the original creep show it would have been at home it it fits with all of that uh i still think that gornick is a more it, like it, it still lacks some of the style of Romero's direction and some of the pace of Romero's editing, but it's pretty good. And then we get to the final uh, segment, which is uh, the Hitchhiker. And the Hitchhiker is the story of Annie Lansing, as played by Lois Childs, who, if uh, y- you don't recall, was uh, Holly Good Holly Goodhead in Moonraker the James Bond movie and she was in uh, Death on the Nile and Broadcast News and she's been in a a ton of stuff Uh, was working up until 2006 uh, although it seems like she is retired at this point but really lovely woman and uh, it's her having an affair she's leaving this guy's house that uh, she's sleeping with she's running late uh, because they didn't set an alarm and her husband is always home on time And so she has to get home ahead of him. Uh, She's not paying attention. And sure enough, she ends up uh, running down a hitchhiker who then uh, follows her uh, all the way home, Uh, you know, in a corpsey form. Like every time she turns around, she sees him on the side of the road. Every time she stops, there he is. And the thing that I like about it is that it's a nice parable for... Uh, the guilt that she feels for having done this, like you could uh, sort of make the argument that there is never uh, a ghostly hitchhiker at all. This is just the uh, her conscience weighing on her. And that's fine, and that's interesting enough. I would say it goes on too long, and it's far too familiar a story. You know, there's, there's no question of how this story is going to go from the first time that you see it. Uh, it, you know, it's never going to be surprising. And not that the stories need to be surprising, you know, the, the stories in Creepshow aren't necessarily surprising either. But, you know, Hal Holbrook using a monster in a crate to get rid of his abusive wife is at least clever as opposed to a woman who hits a guy is then haunted by the guy. And, and again, if you get into the more psychological aspects, it's a little more fun than that. But it's still pretty straightforward you know it's a real down the middle kind of affair and and that's not always bad but it's just sort of uninteresting um and i would still say of the three it's probably the second best it's just kind of dull like i after you know she goes off the road for the second time i'm like all right i get it she is gone off the road uh you know this thing is after her. let's get to the point of this and it felt like that was uh, stretched out for time when it didn't necessarily need to be. That all being said, Creepshow 2 is okay. The Raft is excellent. Old Chief Woodenhead is kind of bad for a number of reasons. And The Hitchhiker is okay. And like I really like Lois Childs in it. I think her performance is quite good in it. 
but that's just not enough to save it from being kind of a mediocre entry into a horror anthology that's kind of mediocre. Oh, and then the wraparound. Uh, so here's what sucks about Creepshow 2 is you end with this hitchhiker segment, which feels like it drags. So the pacing is off. By the time you're getting to the end of the movie, you're like, okay, good. This thing is almost over. I'm ready for it to be done, which is not ever how you want to feel in an anthology. Like when I watch Creepshow, Creepshow, the original Creepshow, 30 minutes longer, and I wanted it to go on. Creepshow 2, 90 minutes, the perfect length of a horror film, and it couldn't be over soon enough. And then, and then, if, if that Hitchhiker segment weren't boring enough, we go back to this awful fucking animation where this kid is uh, has, has sent away for Venus flytrap bulbs, a giant Venus flytrap bulbs, and now Venus flytraps are eating all of the bullies who were terrorizing him. Great. Who gives a fuck? And I, it's just all the animation's so bad. I just can't get over how much I dislike that animation. And then the end of the movie is just Tom Savini as the creep, only it's not his voice, you know, saying, uh, see you next issue, kitties, or whatever, and just throwing magazines out the back of the truck for like 10 minutes while the credits roll. It, like, you see him go all the way into the distance, and you're like, man, even these credits seem to go on for too long. So, yeah, Creepshow 2, a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, it's not awful, and I know a lot of people really like it, and I'm not trying to, uh, you know, tr tr convince you not to enjoy a thing you enjoy, obviously. Uh, if you like Creepshow 2, great. It's just not for me. I think there are so many better anthologies. Like, if you want to do great anthologies, uh, go back to the, like, 72 Tales from the Crypt, or... Uh, Asylum or, you know, Trick or Treat, uh, which we've done on the 31 Days of Halloween before, or Creep Show. Like, there are just so many much better examples of the horror anthology, some even more modern, obviously, than Creep Show 2. And they're, they're just better for you. They're, like, cinematically nutritious as opposed to Creep Show 2, which feels very workmanlike and not very creative and not very inspired and creep show. The original feels nothing but inspired and it, it's just uh, very nearly a perfect anthology. Uh, okay. So enough of that tomorrow, we are going to talk about creep show three, which was a movie I had not seen uh, and it does not uh, follow. I mean, it, it kind of follows the first two movies, but it's really more of a situation where a company bought up the rights and, you know what? Let's just talk about that tomorrow. Uh, have yourselves an incredible day. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this 25th day of October. I will be back tomorrow to uh, talk about Creep Show 3 on the 26th day of our 31 days of Halloween. See you then. Oh.